Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutation unto the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, brief video dealing with a uh, question that was posed to me on this video understanding the new covenant all right and these two individuals that you see uh doing this video uh are former members of the gms trinidad camp all right now if you remember some years ago members of that camp left over a disagreement on the new moon okay um they believe uh, uh, in a uh, permanent Friday sundown to Saturday sundown Sabbath. And uh, they use that as a reason to separate, you know, which when men, you know, do things like that, you know, ultimately they've been planning or always wanted to leave. They just, you know, pinpoint a particular uh, thing to strain at and use that as their, you know, means to separate. All right. Now, um when you uh deal with this guy here you know he ultimately committed adultery dealing with one of the younger brothers in the camp's wives you see so this dude is off he's wicked both of them are here to cause confusion and ultimately their new thing now is that if you're teaching israel that they have to keep the laws you're wicked you're going off because the messiah died you know you know uplifting the messiah you see now Real quick, I'm going to start here in the book of, uh, let's get to Galatians 3 real quick. Then we'll get to the question that was posed. Because, because Jake just ain't going to stop. You know, Jake is going to figure out a way to rebel. And it's always around the Passover that these spirits and, you know, uh, to jump on men. And that's all right, you know. We uh we learn from uh the the mistakes and mishaps of these men and use them as an example of what not to be. All right, because here it is, you have a two hour and forty five minute lesson, you know, just to tell Israel they don't have to keep the commandments. And if you're teaching Israel to keep the commandments, they're gonna be destroyed. Now, are we saved by keeping the commandments? No. Because we're not under any covenant agreement right now. We're under grace to be ushered into that new covenant but what you do with your grace period is an indicator if you really truly fear the lord or not so if you're living a life of sin and adding sin upon sin all right and that's your intent then no you won't be accepted by your how about you shine to that new covenant i want to get this uh scripture real quick that uh christians and men who come in this spirit love to uh jump to all right, this is the book of Galatians. Now, what was happening in uh, at this time where you had a group of men called the Judaizers, or ultimately Jake of the circumcision, you know, coming around telling, you know, men that they had to keep the laws perfectly in order to be delivered, you know, and that was the, the, the back and forth. That was the big issue dealing with the circumcision and the uncircumcision, but we've done lessons on that, so... This is Galatians 2 and 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. You see, under that first covenant, we had to keep those laws perfectly. Okay. But by faith, you see, but by the faith of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Now, if you have faith in Yahweh Shai, all right, are you going to eat swine? You see, are you going to uh, uh, be an adulterer? Are you going to uplift those practices? No, you're not. Why? Because they go against the moral code of the law, statutes, and commandments. And we'll get to that in just a minute. It says, But by the faith of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, even we have believed in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach that we might be justified by the faith of Hamashiach and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. All right. Now, there's a balance with that, that you have to go into the scriptures and bring out. All right. Which men don't do, because, of course, you can stop there. See, so I'm free and delivered to do. And, and as I will. Right. It says, but if 
if while we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is therefore the Messiah, the minister of sin, God forbid. So if you're just going to say, well, you know, I'm justified by the Messiah as a Christian do, you see, and say, well, well I'm good now. He died on the cross. I can pretty much live as I want to live. Then you're saying that the Messiah is the minister of sin. God forbid, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, what are the things that we destroyed when we came into this truth? Idol worship, which that is a law not to bow to idols. Eating uh, 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 raw meat, that is a law not to eat of blood. You understand? These are laws. Eating swine. Now, is eating swine a, a sin unto death? No. But that is, a, that, that is clearly a law you can keep to the best of your ability to show your faith. You see, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So what is a transgressor? Okay, parabates. All right, real quick. A transgressor, a lawbreaker. So there's a balance with that. Of course, we're not saved by the law, but through faith in Yahweh Shai, but your faith in Yahweh Shai, all right, is supposed to turn you into a new creature. All right? Now, let's go to the question that was asked on this comment board uh, by me. Knowing that this guy's an adulterer, we have more than uh, two or three witnesses. We have a whole camp of witnesses against you. But you know, you disappear and you pop back up with a new agenda. And, and the men who leave or are put out of camps, you know, it's funny how their only doctrine seems to be to come against the camp that they left. Like Nazariah, for an example. He left Great Millstone, or was kicked out, rather. And his whole doctrine was anti-great millstone no matter if he was mentioning them directly or indirectly it was to come against what he learned from those men from the men of the lord now here's the question and we're going to get into this so can i commit adultery the the the, the, the answer he gave was where did we say that well when you listen to this clown ass video because the scripture, the law says not to commit adultery, right? You see? So if you're saying we don't have to commit, you know, uh, or, or if we don't have to keep the laws, then you're giving license to sin. Now, what does the scripture say? Ecclesiastes 15 and 20. He have commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. You see? He didn't give any man license to sin. So the question is, can I commit adultery? Where did we say that? Okay, so he posed this question, which I uh, saw Christians use this before, <laughs> proving that they don't understand the Bible, man. Hebrews 7 and 16, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. It says, what are the laws of a carnal commandments? So what he's saying is that the laws are carnal. This shows you that this dude has no understanding of the Bible, and he's ultimately a Christian. He may be calling on the names, he may, but he's of the spirit of a Christian. He's anti-Messiah, and he doesn't even understand what he's talking about. Now, what does this mean? Because this is in the book of Hebrews, the uh, 7th chapter and the 16th verse. And I asked him, all I'm asking you is a question, yea and nay. You see, he never answered that question. Can I commit adultery? Now, if he says no, why? Because it's not the right thing to do. No, because it's a law. Of course, it's uh, morally, it's wicked. But more importantly, it's a law. You see? And when you get Romans, the 13th chapter... We'll get that later. Keeping the commandment is fulfilled in love. So this dude don't have any love to sleep with a brother's wife. 
<laughs> Let's get that as a matter of fact. Romans the 13th chapter. Damn near three hours to tell Israel they don't have to keep the laws. Romans 13 and 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Can we do these things? No. Why? Because they are laws. Thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So if I love you, there are standards in a moral code that I will go by, and that moral code and standard can be found in the law, statutes, and commandments, which in this time, those things should be automatic. You see, the fringes now are in your mind, because the fringes were for the purpose of Jake remembering to keep the laws. You don't need fringes to remember to keep the laws. Now, you can wear fringes, okay? But you've had men wear fringes and go <laughs> shoot people, you know, wear fringes and commit all sorts of abomination. You can wear fringes calling on Jesus Christ, which the law tells you not to make mention of the name of another God. So the fringes are ultimately in your mind where you remember and it's, it's, it's automatic that you're walking in the spirit. Now, go on to this question, and that's what I wanted to get into, ultimately, Hebrews 7 and 16. So I, I answered uh, his question, and I answer it here in the scripture. What is the carnal commandment? It says, the carnal commandment is where high priests were after the order of Aaron and not after the order of the Messiah. Under that covenant, the first covenant, which was broken, a priest had to be born in the flesh as a Levite, thus carnal. The law isn't carnal, it's spiritual. Romans 7, 14, we'll get that. I just asked a simple question, sir. My question is, can a man commit adultery? And if not, why? See, now he's, he, he's trapped. Because if he says, no, you can't commit adultery, then he would have to then say, well, because it's a law. Anyway, it's that simple, really. It's not really that big of a deal. But I wanted to deal with this... Uh, this scripture because I've saw Christians use this before not really understanding what the hell they're talking about because you ask a Christian who's Aaron and what he represented in the in the Bible they they won't know they may know well, Moses his brother okay well what was his role what was his importance what about his sons what were they what, what was their importance under that first covenant they were the high priest and did the duties of the temple of the sacrifice all right in the priesthood now this is hebrews 7 and 16 now we're going to go up but let's deal with this real quick it says who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment speaking of melchizedek <laughs> All right, and we're going to tie it all together in the end, but I wanted to make this point real quick. Who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. All right, now what does this mean? What does it mean not after the law of a carnal commandment? Go into the book of Numbers, the eighth chapter. Okay? This is Numbers 8 and 10. I start at 9. And thou shalt bring the Levites. Now, who are the Levites? Okay. They're of the sons of Jacob. Okay. What does it mean, lawyer? It means joined unto me. All right. Now, the thing is, they were made priests, you know, you know, at the time of uh, Exodus. All right. But there was already a priesthood established before there was a Levite. Keep that in mind. All right. And the proof of that is Melchizedek, okay, what did Abraham do to Melchizedek? He paid tithes to him, you see? Anyway, <laughs> Numbers 8 and 9, And thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation, 
and thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the Lord, and the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. And Aaron, see, shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering unto the children of Israel, that they may execute the services of the Lord. All right? So under that first covenant, it required a Levitical priest. You had to be born after the sons of Levi. You had to be born into that tribe to be a priest. See? Flesh. Carnal. As a matter of fact, let's go right back to Hebrews 7 and 16, who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment. Okay, now let's look up the word carnal. The word for carnal, sarkikos, is what? Fleshly. Carnal, having the nature of flesh under the control of an animal appetite. So this is not dealing with the law. This is dealing with how the law was administered. You see, it was administered through the priest, which had to be born in the flesh of the tribe of Levi. All right, let's get Romans 7 and 14 real quick. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. You see, the law is spiritual. The law is not carnal. What the hell is wrong with you? All right, but get more understanding going back to numbers. All right, and let's look up that word Levites, man. Okay, and Aaron, all right, Arawan, light bringer, showing you the true light is the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the laws. All right, that's the true light, whereas the, you know, the, 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 the illuminated ones of this world bring a light that is truly darkness, contrary you see the priesthood of this world. But anyway, brother of Moses, a Levite, and the first high priest. See? First high priest. Now, let's go to Levite. All right? Lawyer. Joined to. All right? Under Moses and Aaron, Israel were joined to the Heavenly Father via a covenant. Okay? which was written on stone. That's another thing. You see, the first covenant, the laws were written on stone. The second covenant, the, the laws will be written on our inward part. That, that's not going to be done by Aaron. That's going to be done by Yahawashai. Because under that first covenant, after the sacrifices, we still sinned. We still went off. You see? But once Yahawashai implements that second covenant, you see, we won't have any uh, any sin in us, man. And right now we're overcoming death through the word being put in us in this grace period. All right. It says, and the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullock and shall offer the one for sin. Okay. And the other for a burnt offering unto the Lord and make an atonement for the Levites. And thou shalt set the Levites, you see how it keeps mentioning the Levites, before Aaron and before his sons, and offer them for an offering unto the Lord. Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of the Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. This was the requirement of a priest under the first covenant. And after that shall the Levites go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt cleanse them and offer them for an offering. You see, <laughs> I mean, for they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Israel instead of such as an open every womb, even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, have I taken them unto me. You see, and that's spiritual because under the second covenant, we're all going to be made priest. You see. But it's not going to be after the order of Aaron. All 12 tribes will be priests after the order of Malak, Tazadak, Melchizedek. See, if everything was still based upon the Levitical priesthood, not all of us could be priests. That's why Genesis, the 49th chapter, tells you your lawgiver will come from Judah. 
See, he's going to be the one to gather the people. Everything that's happening here under the Levites is only a, uh, a, uh, an example of what's to come. Okay? The Levites were made priest, okay? Aaron and so forth, but there was already something that they were mimicking. There was already a priesthood set up. See? So, and, and, that, and that's proof here in Genesis, the 14th chapter, as I uh, just brought up. All right, Genesis 14. And 18, and Malak Tazadak Melchizedek, which means king of righteousness. All right, king of Salem, which is king of peace. Who's this talking about? All right, we've done lessons on who that is. Okay, that's Yahawashai. See, a lot of you think that the Messiah just showed up in the New Testament, man. He's from the beginning. See, he was made high priest in the heavens. Whereas the Levites were made high priest on earth. After a carnal command, they had to be born, right? Into that tribe in order to be priest and high priest. It says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, for he was the priest of the most high God. And a priest is a mediator. You see? Let's look up the word priest. Kahan. Priest, principal offer, officer, or chief ruler. Pre king, priest, Melchizedek, Messiah. <laughs> Even they know. Even they know, man. <laughs> very beautiful, very beautiful. Levitical priest, Zadokite priest, Aaronite priest, the high priest. And there's different orders, right? But the requirement under that first covenant was carnal. You had to be born into that particular tribe. You see, but Melchizedek, as we'll get in this chapter, all right, which you have to read up. These men brought, you know, this, this, this out in Hebrews 7 and 16. You see, but they don't understand it. So let's start at one and we'll, 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 we'll read down and just get a few points. I'm not going to go too deep into it because we've done lessons on it. But um, Melchizedek's priesthood like the Messiah's. All right. Now, um, it says for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, which what is Salem? Jerusalem. That's where peace will be ushered forth from. Who's the king of Jerusalem? <laughs> Melchizedek, the Messiah, man. The king of peace. Is not the Messiah called the king of peace? Come on, man. Woo! That's where the temple is, man. But see, you don't understand. There's a, there's a temple in the heavens before the earthly tabernacle. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth, all right, part of all. He tithed. So the tithing system was already set. The high priest is already set at the time of Abraham. All right. Now, technically, the first priest on earth was Adam. You see, in the heavens, we know who that was, Yahweh Shah, but on earth, the first priest was Adam. He passed that knowledge down, all right, uh, uh, to Abel, who had a more perfect sacrifice than Seth, all right, uh, uh, and so forth. Noah, Shem, or Faxad. All right, and on down the line, it was reintroduced to Abraham, right? Abraham. See, Abraham was reintroduced to his legacy and his, and his, his uh, duty as a son of God, all right? Because Adam was the son of God. So to Abraham, who, all, who gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, 
king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem. See, which is king of peace. And it's, it's very interesting that he was a king and a priest. All right. And what does it say in Revelation, the fifth chapter, that we will be kings and priests? I don't have to get it. And reign on the earth. See, we, we didn't get that glory under Aaron. You see, in the Levitical priesthood. That glory is going to come under Yahweh. It says, says, without father, you see that? Without father and without mother and without descent. Now, seeing that under that first covenant, the priest had to have a mother and a father in Levitical descent. <laughs> you see, that made that the carnal commandment. That's what that's talking about. And we'll, 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 we'll break it down further as we go. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but may like unto the Son of God abideth a priest continually. So this is telling you that Melchizedek was the Son of God. You see? He had either mother or father. See? He didn't belong to any particular tribe, but yet he was high priest. Why? Because the Heavenly Father made him high priest in the heavens. He made an oath to him, and you can get that in Psalms uh, 110. All right? As a matter of fact, let's get that. Real quick. And we'll tie it all together in just a minute. Psalms 110. <laughs> the Lord gives dominion to the king. Woo! <laughs> Man. This book is beautiful, man. Psalms 110 and 1. A Psalm of David, the Lord said, said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right? And who's at the right hand of the Most High? His son, his high priest, his mediator. How he communes with his chosen people on earth. See? And under the first covenant that was done via the, uh, the, uh, the temple, the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, and so forth, man. All right? But now that we don't have a physical temple, the Lord communes with us, all right, through his right hand. All right? To where he's able to send us the comforter to give us understanding of what we should go and tell Israel. That's the duty of a priest. All right? So much, but uh, let me get through it. It says... The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. And that's what Yahweh is going to do. You see? Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. At that time when Yahweh is set up, even when he really starts to judge harshly on the earth, Jake is going to be willing, but it's going to be too late for a lot of them. In the beauties of the holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn... And will not repent. See, the Lord swore to this high priest. See? Where was uh where, where did the Lord swear unto Aaron and the Levites? They were made high priest on the earth pretty much after the time that uh uh, uh Moses slew, I, I believe like thirty two hundred or thirty two thousand Israelites for being wicked. And, and, and bowing to idols, man. Pretty much the Levites were down. And from that point going forward, they were pretty much the priest. Right? But this priest, the Lord have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Malak Tazadak. See, it's not based upon him being born into a particular tribe. See, he was made a priest in the heavens. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. And that's that's what Yahweh is coming to do. Uh, Revelation, the 19th chapter, goes into that. So this priest, Hebrews 7 and 3, without father and without mother and without descent, you see, neither being of days nor end of life, but is made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was. And it's, it's, it's funny, he's only mentioned twice in the Old Testament, 
but he holds so much weight because that is your access as an Israelite to the promise. You Israelites who, who, who deny the Messiah, do you realize you can't go straight to the Father? Abraham had to pay tithes, okay, and be blessed of Melchizedek, but you somehow can go straight to the Father. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of his spoils. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, see, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren. All right. And, it, and it's funny, the Christian church says the law is done away with, but then when it comes to tithes, somehow that, that law still stands. That is, of their brethren, although they came out of the loins of Abraham. See that? The Levites came out of the loins of Abraham through Isaac and through Jacob, right? But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. See that? And that's going back to Melchizedek. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. <laughs> and who was the less in that situation? Abraham. But he was blessed of the better. All right, which is Melchizedek, Yahweh Shai, the high priest, your way back to the Father, your access to the promises, your access to the Holy of Holies without a physical temple in the earth. See? All tribes, all 12 tribes. And here, men that die receive tithes. See? Aaron and his sons carnal they were carnal meaning they were flesh see they die they're born into the earth through a man and a woman and they die but they receive tithes but here all right but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth see abraham paid tithes to the high priest <laughs> see the priest of the most high God, the son of God. As I may also say, all right, and as I may so say, Levi also who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. So even Levi bows to Melchizedek. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So even Levi, the Levitical priesthood, is not over, all right, the priesthood after Melchizedek, all right? And you still have men who fight with that, <laughs> all right? Y'all go see, and when that goes back to what we just read, the Lord sworn and will not repent thou art a priest forever after the order of Malak Tazadak. Who's he talking about? The one who sits at his right hand. Verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, that's the carnal commandment. It's not talking about the laws being carnal, but it's talking about the Levite priest having been born, you see, by man and woman in order to be priest. For what further need was there for another priest that should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? See, perfection didn't come through the Levitical priesthood. See, we received the law, statutes, and commandments on stone, but guess what? We broke that covenant. Now we're under grace, man. See, when John the Baptist baptized Yahweh, what did he say? As a matter of fact, I have that real quick. Because a lot of people don't realize John was a direct descendant of Aaron. Okay, how do we know his father had the duties, all right, of uh, 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 burning the incense in the temple every day? His father, Zechariah. So he was of the descendant of Aaron, man. Which makes what he did that much more, you know, impressive, separating from the temple and going and preaching Yahweh Shai in the wilderness. Understanding that there is a high priest greater than anything this temple can do for us. <laughs> what did he tell the people? What did he tell Israel? 
Matthew 3 and 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance because under that first covenant did not those high priests have to be baptized by water? So that represents that first covenant. See, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, of whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You see? See, you got these Christians talking about, you know, water baptism is mandatory for salvation. Well, we'll, we'll go put your ass in some fire then. Go, go baptize yourself in some uh, uh, actual fire. You don't see you doing that one. This is speaking of an internal cleansing. And ultimately, what that first covenant didn't do, this covenant will through the high priest, Yahawashai. But it starts with us being cleansed, all right, while we're in this flesh. But eventually, he's going to do what? He's going to wash away the filth fully. As a matter of fact, uh, Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, Ezekiel 36 In 22, therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, I do this not for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake. See, he's going to he's gonna perfect us so that his name be glorified, man, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went, you became heathen. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen. You see, sanctify means wash. See? So what the priesthood represented, what the baptism represented, Yahweh is going to do that all in spirit. You see? And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, all right, said the Lord thy God, all right, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. How is he going to sanctify us? For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. And that process is going to be through us being beamed up given new bodies all right and the heathen the people are going to see it not everybody's going to die see then we're going to be brought to our own land okay starting at jerusalem for the purpose of what bringing forth order then will i sprinkle clean water upon you see the water in the jordan river that couldn't really wash away sins it was only symbolic what john the baptist was doing all right, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. See that? This is what Yahweh is coming to do. See, under that first covenant, those sacrifices did not lead to you, all right, fully being washed from filth. You would have to do another sacrifice. Then you would have to do, and this is why the Lord did away with that because Jake, they 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 uh abused the sacrificial system you see which led to curses but now through yahweh we have this chance man a new heart will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you a heart of flesh and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and keep my judgments and do them so if the laws are done away with what's the use of him putting them in us for the new covenant see he's going to take away the stony heart which is the carnal commandment all right given under the, the the levite priest man not that the law itself was carnal you see but the way it was issued to us were by men in the flesh who had to be born of a carnal or a particular tribe See, but this high priest, all right, who was born of the Holy Spirit, born in the heavens, <laughs> spoken into existence, is how we're going to get that everlasting life, man. And this is why John said, increase, he must increase. What did John say? John 3. It's funny how that was written in red. Those that, what did John say? Hold up. 
John 3 and 30. He must increase, meaning this priesthood must increase, but I must decrease. See that? He's speaking in spirit. Could be Aaron. I'm speaking as a man. <laughs> All right. So he says here, what? He that cometh from above is above all. Why? Because he was made high priest in the heavens. He that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. He that is cometh from heaven is above all, man. He was letting you know this is the high priest from the heavens. See that? Woo! So let's go back here. see here what would we like it 12 13 let's read this again Hebrews 7 and 11 give me one second yeah man so y'all dudes are through y'all dudes are through man And Jake, whenever Jake go off, they always get close as hell to the screen, man. Not that you brothers who do those videos with your face close to the screen, but it's just something about when Jake going off, they they he always do these videos where they faces you just looking all in their goddamn nostrils, man. Hebrews seven and eleven. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what people? The Israelites. What further need was there for another priest, all right, that should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? You see? And it even tells you in Genesis 49, as a matter of fact, I'll get that in a minute. It says, for the priesthood being changed, there was a necessity... All right, there was, it says, for the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity of the change also of the law. You see, the sacrifice. See, Yahweh fulfilled the duties of the sacrifice. That's what he said. I came to fulfill the law, not to do away with it. The hell is wrong with you all? He's the high priest. He's going to issue forth the law into our inward parts man but right now we're under a grace period to where we're not under any covenant you're not under the first or second covenant this is, this is what you israelites don't understand because if you were first of all if you were under the first covenant die nigga you'd be dead right cut off hurt see if you were under the second covenant you wouldn't be teaching you be perfect. The hell out of here. You under the second covenant. You you got Christians talking about they under the second covenant with a McDonald's fish sandwich <laughs> or, or, or or damn Mc, McRib in the bag sitting in the in the seat next to them. It's contaminated. It's filthy, man. You need new flesh. You can't be under the new covenant in this flesh. The hell is wrong with you people, man? But that's all right. It says, for he of whom these things are spoken of pertaineth to another tribe, which, all right, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Where did you hear Judah being brought to the altar for the duties of the high priest under that first covenant? Never. David couldn't even touch the Ark of the Covenant. You couldn't even touch the Ark of the Covenant if you wasn't of that particular tribe. The Levites, right? David had to set up a choir of Levites. He had to set up, all right, and it's all symbolic of us. He had to get Levites to get the Ark of the Covenant for him. You see? For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Judah. Now, the Messiah, when he came to offer himself up as a sacrifice, he came out of Judah. He was born of a man and a woman, all right? But the spirit in him was that spirit and authority given from the beginning. See, of which tribe Moses spake nothing 
concerning priesthood. All right. When did Moses call any of Judah? All right. To do the duties of the high priest. When did he wash any of the Judites? Get this in uh, Le uh, Leviticus, the eighth chapter. Moses consecration of Aaron and his sons, man. See? Hey, they had the anointing oil. You know who was anointed with that oil? I believe David and Solomon. See? But that oil was only to be used for the sons of Aaron. Zadok the high priest anointed Solomon. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I'm going ahead of myself. It says, uh, Leviticus 8 and 1, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him. And what does it say? He's supposed to wash them. Verse uh, 6, Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. So basically, it was for the Levites. We ain't got to go too much into that. All right. But also, I want to get this in Genesis 49 and 10. Speaking of Judah, it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver, all right, from between his feet. All right, until Shiloh come. What does that mean? Peace, tranquility. Until Melchizedek, the king of peace, come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. See that? So your lawgiver, Hakak, all right, to engrave, to inscribe, just like the laws were written on stone, in, in the Most High, at his right hand, wrote those laws. <laughs> For those who can receive that, it tells you that his, the law came from his right hand. See? But see, the, 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 the one who's going to write the laws on our inward part is Yahawashai, man. To cut in, to mark out, to engrave, to inscribe, the lawgiver. So your lawgiver, your high priest, in the way you will be brought back to the Father, will come of Judah. See that? Judah. Going back here. to Hebrews 7 and uh, 14 for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribes all right, uh, Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood alright and it is far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest if you understand the scriptures but see most people don't who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. See, he liveth forever. <laughs> he conquered death. Because <laughs> well, you can say, well, he doesn't know, he rose. See, he conquered death. You see? But more, more importantly, he was born in the heavens. All right. In the beginning was the word. See, and that's eternal power. He had to come down in the flesh to fulfill a duty. All right. For he testified thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So when it says not made after the law of a carnal commandment, that's speaking of the Levite priest. That's not speaking of the law. As we read here, the law is spiritual. Romans 7 and 14. The law is holy. Verse 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and good and just. Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So the law is what's spiritual. Man is what's carnal. We're going to end it off here. Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever and they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So you're teaching Israel to die. 
Now, it's one thing to say you're saved by keeping the laws. And a lot of camps come in that energy. That is not what we're saying. You see, faith and works go hand in hand. See, the scriptures say that the remnant... What would make Esau mad at us in the latter days is that we would be holy and separate from his way. Revelation 12 and 17, and a dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. So we are teaching our people to keep the commandments. That is how you become holy. See? Now, are you saved by the law? No. All right. You just keep them to show your obedience. If you have a son and you give him a set of rules. All right. If he just continuously breaks those rules. You're not going to, you, you know, but if he's obedient and you see and he's trying, at least. What do you say? You say, man, let me have mercy on him. So that's how it is with us. You see, but well, see you niggas like you. And the reason the Lord had you put this reprobate spirit on you is so that we can show you to the congregation and your destruction is next. All right. And the heavenly father is going to deal with you specifically. King. All right. You, you a king, but you're not you're not you're not well kept enough not to lay with another man's wife. Yeah, the most high through his son has opened up all right uh, uh uh this your minds to you know do this wickedness so that we can show you to the congregation and what's next is you all's destruction man and i'm not for to do no uh back and forth nigga you're wrong you don't understand the scriptures and may yahweh by shim yahweh destroy you both man shalom